So first off, thank you for having me. I'm I'm uh, we've we've played this game a bunch of times yeah. before. I mean, you have the uh, the recordings on uh, on YouTube, and I'm and I'm really happy that we now have a a DevOps version as well. I mean, I'm under no illusion that I'm going to win this time. Um, <laughs> if anyone has seen any of the episodes except for the first one that I played, I lost them all. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, at least I now get to talk about things that I know well, too. Exactly. So even if you don't win the game, per se, I know you're going to have your background in DevOps is going to be extremely valuable. And, and uh, uh, you're going to be the winner there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, yeah, you want to you want to kind of explain the board really quick um, and, and, you know, share whatever you can about uh, DevOps. And I'm sure we're going to talk more about it as we move along. But yeah, totally, totally. So, um, uh, you know, the, the board is, is, is sort of divided into like three major sections. So you have the silo DevOps, the fragmented DevOps and the platform DevOps and um, this this sort of stems from a great article by GitLab CEO uh, Sitsi Brandi, um, Dutchman. So you know it has to be good. Um, <laughs> and uh, in in that article, he actually talks about the fact that silo DevOps is like one of the first stages of of DevOps, where you have a lot of different independent teams that use their own software, and um, that means that you're going to have different types of software for the same task just distributed across the company. Um, and as you, uh, as you switch teams and as people start to uh, start to learn more and, and use, that obviously becomes this explosion of tools. And so the, the, the idea of DevOps is really silo to like one team. One team can do their job with the tools they have, but it's, it's siloed. Then the, sort of the second phase where it talks about fragmented DevOps is, is all about making sure that you start to standardize across your company. And uh, that means that you're gonna be thinking about, okay, the tools that we use in different teams, how do they work together, but also which one should, uh, should I pick to go do the, the thing that it needs to do. And then ultimately, which is like the, uh, the platform DevOps era, which, um, which I actually think is, is really interesting as a lot of companies start to build platforms nowadays, essentially is bringing that all together. It's bringing together things like vulnerability scanning, obviously things like source control, um, but also things like package management. And as you bring those things together into one single platform, it replaces a lot of tools. It replaces a lot of fragmentation and, and ultimately helps you as a company to essentially standardize and go to market faster because regardless of whatever software tool you pick for whatever problem that you want to solve, the end goal is pretty much always the same. We want to build better software faster so that we can innovate, go to market faster and ultimately make more money. Awesome. Should we get started? Do you want to? We should get started. Me? Or no? Yeah, you should, should but get. You, but but yeah, since you you provided all this amazing <laughs> background, why don't you make the first move? Okay, awesome. You know what? In that case, my first move is going to be uh, changing the one hundred to. Uh, uh, I think it was fifty five, right? Uh, fifty five. Yeah. So what yeah. we are doing awesome. basically, uh, we have to launch one product in each of these nine environments and for each launch we would pay the amount indicated in that uh, in the corner um, but to speed up the game a little bit we added up all those numbers so it's 45 and uh, you know we pay in advance so that, that way we can start uh, moving immediately so okay and now we can kind of strategize you can uh, Played a little bit like chess. I noticed that uh, chess players enjoy uh, enjoy the, the the strategy, like small moves that that kind of create very complex situations. So, okay. So I'm gonna, like I said, just one piece per player, one product in uh, in each environment. So, and by the way, in the video, you're going to see in a corner, the, the rules, um, the, all the actions that are available to us and uh, the money associated with it. 
Um, obviously, you can find those on uh, on the website. But uh, the way this game is being uh, won, it's like in business is when you create synergies, you create these uh, in the game we call it simply alignments of three or or more neighboring uh, products, and then that's when you're gonna you're gonna get additional bonus. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's you. Yeah. I think I started the game uh, many times before, so I'm still in my mind. I'm thinking that. <laughs> uh, it's, no, I cannot move there. I can move here. It's going to be fun, or at least yeah. I hope it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the interesting part about uh, DevOps, like you, you mentioned uh, Sid's article, is that there's also, since it's a very new industry, um, when you look from left to right, it's kind of how the, the tools evolved. Initially, there were like point solutions, and they continued to expand. Um, but also now, if you look at the present situation, there are many DevOps companies that have, you know, the big product, some sort of platform, kind of end-to-end -end automation of the, of the software development lifecycle. But also they have point solutions, maybe a, a, a repository for, for, for code or, or a security solution that could work with other tools. Um, right, Leon? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think if you look at, uh, by the way, it's it's your turn, I think, or, or is it mine? Oh, it it's is yours. mine. It's yours because we oh, have. Oh, I'm sorry. Tool. Okay, yeah. now it's your turn. Um, so as you look at, for example, the uh, probably number one company in, uh, in source control, obviously GitHub, uh, then they started off with nothing more than source control. I mean, that's what they did. That's what, what they became famous for. And if you look at it today, then they've, they've added so many facets of, of a complete DevOps platform. I mean, you have vulnerability scanning uh, with things like Dependabot, super awesome, by the way. Um, you have package management, which they, they added not, uh, not too long ago. Uh, so overall, as you sort of see those those platforms evolving, then um, you you actually see them growing larger and essentially adding more and more capabilities, more and more stuff into uh, into their platforms. And while I originally thought that, and we'll probably sort of touch on this during the game as well, that um, that means that you're not going to have any new entrants in the uh, uh, in uh, in the market. Because you know the the big companies are are going to eat everything. That turned out not to be the case. I mean, there were so many new things of uh, on, on like the, the DevOps space that uh, that are being created. Um, just to give you one example of a company I actually really admire, it's called Pulumi, which is all about infrastructure as code. And um, they are they're a relatively new company. They haven't been around for for too long. But um, they've done something what not a lot of other companies can say. I mean, what they do is truly unique, where you can actually write literal code, not YAML, not templates or something. You actually write code that you use to deploy things. And that's, that's such a unique feature that actually made my life so much easier when I still deployed a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so there's always more room for, for customization, for faster, better. Uh, so, and, and that's, by the way, in the game, um, that's why the, the three tiers, so at the top, it's kind of the, the uh, what Boston Consulting Group kind of, they identify the, the, the three main benefits of DevOps. It's efficiency, agility, and quality. So in the game, we have high, medium, and low because... As you're going to see, as as the industry progresses, what is high today, you know, it's going to be low tomorrow. 
so it's constantly there's there's going to be uh there's going to be room for uh for for improvement your move yes absolutely absolutely <laughs> so i'm going to start off by um, by actually making an alignment uh because you talked about those synergies yes so i'm going to move uh this one down from a three to two so i essentially make three because yep. that's where i originated um, but I'm also going to make uh, two plus two plus five uh, for my uh, for my synergy. So that's uh, nine. That's thirteen. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, wait, what did I say? Yeah. So that's nine. No, it's twelve. And then three. That's exactly twelve. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm cheating already. No, it's okay. I, I think <laughs> I was trying to cheat uh, when we play with bicycles and uh, cars and. Uh... Okay. Well, you did that. So what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take you out, my friend. Um, so here in uh, nine environment, where where you know high high quality, high efficiency DevOps DevOps platforms, uh, I'm basically kicking your product out of the that environment, out of that market, and I make nine. So that's uh, sixty four. um so, so okay. go ahead go, go, I, I was about to ask you about devops but i don't want to uh give you excuses if you lose the game to <laughs> tell me that i uh distracted oh, wow. you i mean <laughs> i'm gonna do it now anyway <laughs> <laughs> so i you know what thought came to mind about these uh the devops so the software development life cycle here has eight stages and it's uh, very much aligned with what uh Boston Consulting, its uh, group is saying, but uh, many companies they they dissect this uh, this life cycle in different ways. So I was wondering if at one point where you get like end to end automation and everything is going to be kind of you know invisible, intangible somewhere under the hood, um, are we going to get to a point where uh, these stages are going to be irrelevant? In other words, it's like you know. Um, we can think of it as a, as an assembly line. You just uh, start at one point, and you don't you don't know what's happening at the other end. Or or are these stages always going to be? They have to be exposed for for visibility or for for intervention for uh, actionability, if you like. What do you what are your thoughts on that? So I, I do think that um, depending on, on like where you are at the maturity of, of your company, by the way, it's your move. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank the, you uh, here while you are talking. Ah, uh, darn. Um, so <laughs> you're, yeah. I mean, it's, it, uh, as, as I at least started to say, it's, it's dependent on, on the maturity of your company. I mean, I do think that a lot of the stages that, that you see here on, uh, on that board, like those, uh, the, those eight, um, they, they will always show up. I mean, I they, can, they can be very implicit. They can be very explicit. Um, but overall, you're, you're going to see those stages. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get rid of, or at least not in, in like the short or even medium term future, we're going to get rid of a stage that we're going to call build. I mean, we're going to assemble what, whatever we ship to our customers in one way or another. Um, and I do think that having these, these sort of stages called out is going to make it easier for us as, as developers or product managers or, you know, maybe even a, a consumer to actually make sense of what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you look at uh, like very large companies, um, and I think that AWS actually did a, a blog post on this uh, some some time ago, where they were talking about how many deploys they do every single day. I mean, they do hundreds of thousands of deployments every day. Can you so, explain briefly what deployment is for those who are not? That's a great question. So that essentially means that you're you're taking the uh, the code that a developer has created and uh, putting it into into production so that someone else, uh, a, a consumer, a user can actually make use of it. And companies like AWS, but there are definitely others as well, do that tens, hundreds of thousands of times a day. 
um, with very small incremental updates. So can you imagine that um, they, they'd have to have a developer walk through these eight stages every time? I mean, that's, that's going to be an incredible amount of time. So they've automated pretty much everything. But I'm pretty sure that if you look at how they've automated things, if you look at their process, then you're going to see those, uh, uh, those stages come, uh, come back again. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does, it does make sense because it's still, so DevOps is not just a matter of tools, but it's how you organize your, your teams, how they work together. Right. So it's, uh, um, I, I'd actually argue that DevOps is not about tools at all. I mean, DevOps is, DevOps is a mindset. If you, if you're going to choose to do DevOps, then you're going to align your organization. You're going to align your processes with the idea that you're going to have this cycle from, uh, from development to operations and an incrementally updating, incrementally providing benefit. Um, it's, it's not like that you can go to a store and buy two DevOps. Uh, so it, it really is the mindset of being able to do that rather than buying a tool. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take it because it's my turn, right? Yes. Uh, so I'm taking you with the lateral move. Lateral moves represent innovation, right? Like I'm uh, providing a kind of moving from a siloed DevOps solution uh, to, to a fragmented DevOps. Um, uh, and, and by the way, visually, these are represented as that outer circle. You know, you go from dotted line to... Uh, uh, towards the, the fully continuous one. Um, okay, so this is going to cost me, because I'm taking you out, the originating, the amount indicated in the origin, uh, originating cell, that's two, so I'm down to 65. I, uh, I have a bad feeling about uh, my strategy here, because I, I see now you kept me busy with your DevOps uh, <laughs> shatter. I'm looking, I don't think I'm going to be able to do an alignment anytime soon. So, you know what, that, that was actually my strategy. I mean, I get to talk about things that, <laughs> that I actually really enjoy and at the same time sort of distract you from really thinking about what's happening on the board. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that's obviously really beneficial to me. Yes. So let's see. I hope you're going you're gonna to be able to, to win this. That will be kind of nice for once. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you're up to 89. Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm moving down here in uh, environment six. So since it's just a plane operation operating that business, I'm making six. So this takes me to 71. So I'm I'm moving down my uh, my five here. And it gets me to 94. So quick question I didn't ask you even before about the, the visualization. So basically those balls of fire or whatever you on, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on a board are meant to represent, I guess, pieces of software, updates, whatever they are. And, uh, you know, the, the, the better tools, the ones that the three notch tools are a little bit more more fluid in, in in how the software goes from the programmer to 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 the end device or or end user. So was that obvious for you, Leon, or not really? Um, in all honesty, I thought they were like spaceships, like the uh, the Enterprise <laughs> or something. Um, I mean, I do like Star Trek, um, but uh, but yeah, I can I can see how they might resemble packages that that get deployed or get shipped yeah. somewhere. Okay, well, as long as you didn't perceive them as something else, I guess it's uh, it's fine. Okay, my turn. Yes. Okay, so, well, my friend, looks like I'm I might be able to. So I'm making six with that move. I might be able to do an alignment in the near future. So I'm going to move this one down. And you make five. Yep. OK. So 
Let me see. I'm going to take you out. I know it's not not big deal, but I'm uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm paying one for that. But it's uh, I'm kind of reducing your chances of making uh, alignments by uh, by taking some of those pieces out. Well, you know, in that case, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to move that yes. one here. <laughs> yes. And, and you already, you have what? Um, 30 points ahead of me. So. No, only 20. Well, 19. 20. Yes. Yes. My map is uh, okay. Is off, but I was trying to dramatize. <laughs> okay. So here's a uh, lateral move. Lateral moves are zero. Um, Unless you, when you, when you taking an opponent out, then you're gonna pay the uh, the amount associated with the originating cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this one laterally. It's not gonna make me any money, but that's that's okay for now. Okay, okay. Just you're curious to see what's under the under the piece in terms of this beautiful illustration, like. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. By the way, did you move it? I did. I just, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, if I said no and, and move again, I, I'd essentially be cheating. Because and... I think I was looking at the one in uh, eight environment, in the environment eight. Is that the one you moved? Yeah. Okay. Then, then yeah, maybe I didn't pay attention or something. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll go again. No worries. <laughs> so I moved in, in eight as well. Yep, and I'm gonna take you out here in uh, in seven. Okay. So essentially, I'm making eight. That gets me two. Uh, okay. Three. Okay, so I'm making a big, nice alignment here. Um, so moving down from nine. Um, so that gives me nine from the move itself, and then I have bonus for each piece on the uh, each product in the alignment. So it's nine plus 16 plus 10. So that's, um, so 26, 35, right? Unfortunately, that's correct, yes. Yeah, so that takes me to one, 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 one eleven. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to move this one down. So I make five uh, and then my alignment here. So five, seven is 12 and eight is 20. So it gets me to one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to continue to kind of move down. So this is uh, moving inside the environment eight and I'm making eight. So that's uh, 119. So I'm inching closer and closer. Exactly. So, so by the way, because we we uh, a little bit more about uh, DevOps. I know probably this video is longer than uh, than the usual, but I think for those who are interested in DevOps, uh, you you have some some really cool, interesting insights. So this is for me. It's always been fascinating because it's such a young and dynamic industry. Uh, I mean, it's only been. Um, 10 years or something like that 15 maybe that's been around right yeah absolutely absolutely it's it's not not that old i mean um i i'd actually have to google where or how it originated but i i, I think i think maybe if i can uh share my my knowledge i think i think it, it all happened with uh um uh, introduction of this technology called the container right uh uh or or Microservices, microservices, I guess, are, are related to containers, right? Like the containers in, enable microservices, right? True. Um, but I know Docker, the company who invented this technology called uh, Container, right? That's the correct name. Yes. Um, they, they had a big, uh, big, I guess, influence on, on the, the entire industry. Early on, and and now they're they're kind of struggling. 
Sure. I mean, they they actually weren't the first. Um, what what sort of happened is that the concept of a container existed way before Docker popularized it. I see. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it it was essentially one of the the core foundational technologies behind the Linux kernel, um, and uh, they. But what Docker did very well, very smart, is that they popularized it, made it easy for uh, for other developers to actually go use that. Um, so pretty much around, I think it was 2008, 2009, the, the idea of DevOps and making sure that you could incrementally ship things through production started to emerge. Um, and um, that's also when when the whole notion of, of DevOps days, which is like the conference surrounding the idea of DevOps, started to become popular as well. I, and um, I had to Google or like, or technically <laughs> Bing, I, I do like Bing, um, uh, uh, when the, the first DevOps days was, and that was in 2009, and that was in Ghent, oh. Belgium. Um, so the idea of DevOps days itself even has, has, been, uh, has been with us for over a decade. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you make it sound like it's been for a long time, but it's by, like, if you look at, any other industry, it's crazy how fast this has been, True. Uh, been yes. moving, right? Um, my move, right? Um, I think so. I, I kind of forgot who's moving. So right? I moved here in, uh, in uh, Environment 2. I made a, ah. a lateral move. I don't know if you moved after me. Probably I, didn't. I don't okay. think I did. Okay, go for it. Cause, uh... I'm going to move as well. So then we're at 132. Okay, so I'm moving down here in environment eight, making eight. So this is 127. And by the way, we'll we'll play again this one, DevOps, because I think there's so much that can be can be said here. And I think um, even though the, the the very name or terminology DevOps seems so strange and, and intimidating to to people who haven't been exposed to it, but Eventually, since most companies will have to deal with software, uh, this is going to become kind of more mainstream and mainstream, right? True, absolutely, absolutely. And um, whether or not it's because I'm I've been in this industry, or at least in the IT industry for some time now, or not, I, I'm not sure. But I think that pretty much every company that that I talk to, especially if they're if they're more on the software side of things then they use DevOps or at least the methodology, the ideas of DevOps. And whether or not they are sort of, as the board says, uh, more on the siloed side, just starting off or where they are completely on the platform side, having pretty much everything automated. Um, you know, that's, that, that's just the level of maturity of an organization. But, but ultimately what it comes down to is how fast can you ship? Because that's, that's what's important. The yeah. um, and I mean that obviously comes back to the the three words that you highlighted: efficiency, agility, and quality. Um, because it it is really important to think about your efficiency because you 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 want to make sure that you ship fast, that you ship a good quality software. You want to be agile enough because you want to make sure that when you ship, you also can roll back. And that's one of the most important things because it's really going to hurt you if you ship an update, if you put something into production that breaks everything and then your users can't use your, your application for like a day or so. That's that's not going to be great user experience. Um, and that's also where sort of the quality ties in because you want to make sure that the quality of what you ship is, is going to be good. People are on, only going to remember you for like the latest update. And this is true for, for hardware tools, but this is also absolutely true for software as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I moved down here from eight to seven. So then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take you out here. Oh. So that means I am, uh, I'm paying seven. Uh, uh, no, four, four. Oh, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, that's a good point. The originating yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you pay four. Uh, I'm making an alignment here at the top uh, with the lateral move. So I'm not getting anything from the uh, um, from the move itself. Um, and but I'm making bonus because this is an alignment. So it's five, five, and eight. So eighteen. So this is uh, one fifty three. Yeah. 
Did I do? Yeah, I think it was 153, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just looking at, I was looking at how come you fell behind so much? See, if you talk too much, man. If, if I, know, yeah, this, absolutely. Absolutely. This, you, you know, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> not, not productive at all. <laughs> See, this is where I, I need a DevOps cycle to make sure that, um, that I could continue talking yeah. and I just feed inputs into that like, cycle. cycle you need, that a, I need to do a, a, like a blinking light, right? Like uh, it's it like, a blinking light. Yes. Okay. So I'm moving down here in uh, eight. So making eight, this takes me to 161. So as you're making the move, I'm just going to explain again for those watching um, the, the downward move it's uh, simply operating a business. So the more you sell uh, that, that product or solution, obviously you're making money, but at the same time, the perceived value drops. So, so your money, kind of your margins start to diminish um, to a point where you, know, you become obsolete. So that's why the, the whole idea on this board or map, if you'd like, it's like, what some people refer to as the red queen effect. It's like, you gotta run to stay in, in place. So that's what lasting businesses do. Uh, I'm moving down here in eight. So this takes me to 169. So then I'm moving down here in seven. So one thing I didn't, uh, I don't think I meant, or maybe I mentioned, but uh, from, from playing it with, uh, with other, other friends, you know, some people are tempted. They're like, well, let me collect bonuses for vertical alignments, or let me try and, you know, take the opponent out with a vertical move. So I'm planning on writing a, a kind of a separate sheet of paper, like a one pager where, you know, if you want to try all kinds of modifications, you're welcome to. The, the idea of this game is to, to kind of have a set of uh, core rules that are kind of true to what's happening in the business. But if you want to kind of, you know, get yourself more points for certain bonuses or hot zones or whatever, you, you can do it. Um, uh, with regard to the vertical alignment, I think even if you get points, I feel like it's not the most ideal uh, configuration because you're blocking yourself as you're kind of moving down. But some people want to do that. So my, my turn, right? Yes. So I moved from eight to seven. Uh, this is going to take me 178. So then I'm going to exit here, and that gets me to uh, 163. OK. So I'm going to move down in seven, take you out. Um, and I'm making seven, so this takes me to 185. Yeah, so you can sort of see where, where this is going and yes. the result not being that great for me. <laughs> well, like I said, we're going to play this again because I, uh, I, I love the fact that you, you actually know the industry very well. And uh, uh, I think you have a lot of uh, uh, cool things to say about it. Um, let's see. So I'm going to, here, I'm going to take this in environment two, I'm going to take you out there. And uh, I'm paying two for that. So 183. You know what, maybe maybe next time we should we should talk about serverless. Um, okay, that, that makes it easier for me to like talk and, and concentrate on the game as well. We'll 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 do that. <laughs> um, maybe can we illustrate serverless? Can we? Uh, I think we should. I, I, I just needed to explain. I need to understand the technology. Sure. Or can we use this? 
the DevOps? We, you know, we, we could, we could, we could absolutely talk about um, like uh, uh, virtual machines and containers, and then uh, at least the function as a service part of, uh, of serverless. Okay. Yeah, now let's do it. So, uh, okay, so I'm moving down in seven. Did you collect uh, four? I, I did collect a four, yes. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure you're not losing any money that you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> highly, highly appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah. So this is 190. Uh, and I guess you're going to exit and the game ends, right? Yep. And then I'm at 175. Well, my friend, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I was hoping you can, uh, you know, um, what do they say? Like uh, walk and chew gum at the same time? Yeah, it turns out I can't. <laughs> I was I was sort of hoping as well, you know, talking about DevOps. I, I actually enjoy doing that. And it turns out I enjoyed the talking so much that I just let my game slip. Well, we'll 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 definitely play because uh, I, I think like I said, um there's there's so much that that um kind of rests on DevOps. Like, as I, I I mentioned before we started recording, but you can think of yourself as as the vendor of DevOps solutions, or you can look at this as your infrastructure for your portfolio. So I feel like it's such a unique um, type of product or solution, um, um, and especially if, if you, I'm, I'm excited to hear you know the conversation about the serverless. So um, I, I think this DevOps thing it's uh, it's quite a quite a universal, I guess. True. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I started talking off about uh, started off talking about companies like GitHub and GitLab, and they're obviously the the vendors. But I could have easily started talking about a company that that uses those tools, um, where they start off with silo DevOps, where they're they're thinking, hey, we need to we need to bring something to uh, to production. Let's let's make sure that we can do it fast, that we can do it cheap, that we can do it easy, and sort of let every team decide whatever it is that that they want to do best and as they mature as the company grows then they want to standardize a bit more go to that that fragmented side and as they grow more and more um, you're obviously going to see a lot more requirements that uh, that the uh, that the users have not just the users as like the individual developers but the companies as well because as you grow you're probably going to be start uh, you're probably going to do business in multiple markets um, across different uh, different regions regions and they're going to have different types of uh, regulations that you need to adhere to as a uh, as a company and that's where devops actually becomes really important because it's not just making sure that i get my code into production but it's getting my code into production in an efficient and agile and a reliable way so those are things that um, as as the company matures as the company grows those things become increasingly relevant and increasingly important yeah yeah cool well thank you once again I know this is a longer video uh, but uh, you know we'll do next time we'll be more uh, try to 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 play more talk less but but I yes. think whoever's interested in uh, in DevOps um, I think this uh, this was very cool so Thank you, Leon. Absolutely.